Hello, my name's Sue and I work at Hobbycraft in Carlisle. Today we're going to be looking at three techniques to personalise a t-shirt or a bag. First of all, we're going to be using a stencil and some spray paint to personalise a t-shirt. To make this you will need a plain white t-shirt, fabric spray paint, some Fablon or sticky back plastic, a sharpie pen, some scissors and some paper or some card to go inside the t-shirt to protect the back from the spray paint. So the first thing we're going to do is make a stencil. And what I've got here is some sticky back plastic. I just drew a spiral on it and cut it out. And here's a nice white t-shirt. Lay it out flat. We're just going to pop some paper in between the layers. This protects the back from getting splashed with the dye. So next I'm going to place the stencil. You just peel the backing off the sticky back plastic and just place it where you'd like it to be, taking care that it sits properly and make sure it's laying down very flat so your dye doesn't seep under the edges. Take a paint, make sure it's shook well and just give it a little spray. We're going to do this with all of the colours to create a nice rainbow effect. Now we'll just leave that to dry for four hours. Okay, so we've waited four hours and the paint's dry on the t-shirt we're just going to peel this stencil off. And that's how to customise a t-shirt using spray paints and a stencil. Again, you can use any design you like. Here's one I did earlier using letters as a stencil. So as you can see, the sky's the limit. Next we're going to go on to needle felting which is the art of using roving wool and a barbed needle to push the felt into another fabric. So what we need for this project is some roving wool of different colours, we need some barbed needles, a regular bathroom sponge and your bag. I'm going to start by drawing a little design on the bag. You don't need to draw it, you can do it freehand, but sometimes it just helps. I'm just going to draw a heart and now we're going to start felting it. So you take your sponge and you pop it underneath your design, so in between the layers of the bag. So we take a little bit of wool and what you do with this is you just tear it apart little bits at a time because you build it up and you lay it on your design. You take a needle and you start stabbing. Now it takes a little time to get this wool stabbed into the cotton bag, but all of a sudden it'll just get there. Please watch your fingers because these needles are really sharp. The more you stab your work, the more compressed it gets and you'll see you're getting tighter and tighter into the fabric. Take some more wool and just make sure the edges are nice and neat. Again, watch your fingers. To get the straight lines, just make sure you follow that line down with the wool, tucking it in as you go. Okay, so I think I'm nearly there with my stabbing at the moment. I'm not keen on seeing those needle marks, so what I will do is just give it a little rub and it just loosens the fibres enough to hide those stab marks. Now I'm going to put a nice edge on it with this bright pink. So I'm going to take long strips of it this time, pop it round the edge and again stab it into place. pull off any excess that you might not need. And that's dry needle felting. The design can be as complex or as simple as you like. And here's one I made earlier. Using the same techniques, I just drew a much bigger heart and filled it with really bright, beautiful colours. You could do this too. So next, we're going to personalise a bag using a back stitch. The materials we need for this project are a bag, embroidery threads, an embroidery hoop, a needle, a pair of scissors and a heat sensitive pen with an iron. So first of all we're going to start off by drawing a design on the bag with the heat sensitive pen. I'm just going to draw a simple leaf. So now we're going to put in the embroidery hoop and this strengthens your material to make it easier to sew it. Embroidery thread comes in six strands so you'll need to separate them because we're going to be using three. If you hold the bunch in one hand Take just one strand and you pull it up and out, lay it to one side. Smooth that down 
and repeat for your other two. All three together we thread them into the needle. So we're going to begin by fetching the needle up at your starting point. You can start anywhere you like. Before you pull it all the way through, just make sure you grab that tail so it doesn't disappear because there's no knot in it. About five millimetres up your first line, pop your needle back down. Still keeping hold of that tail. Five millimetres again, fetch your needle back up. But this time what we want to do is grab the tail so we can make sure that the thread crosses over it and holds it in place. So this time you're going to take your needle back down into the end of the first stitch so there's no gap in between the stitches so they run nicely together. Five millimetres ahead of the last stitch you fetch your needle back up. Again you can grab, make sure your tail's tucked in and you can work this tail in all the way along and it keeps it nice and secure and pop your needle back in at the start of the last stitch. And work all the way around your design using this back stitch. Try and keep your stitches nice and even at about five millimetres long each. Finish off your thread, just pop your needle through and as the loops coming through just grab it with your needle and pull it into a little knot and just thread through a couple more stitches and trim it off. So now I'm going to put the veins of the leaf in in a different colour. So exactly the same process, start it in exactly the same way and just colour those leaves in. So when you come to the vein of the leaf it might be just slightly different this time because instead of doing a back stitch what I'm going to do is a running stitch up to the top of the leaf a running stitch is where you leave a 5mm gap in between your 5mm stitches and that means I can come back and fill those gaps in to get back to the central piece. And finish your thread off in the same way as before and give it a little iron to get rid of those red marks. Make sure you use an ironing board or an ironing mat at home, don't iron directly onto the surface. So what you can do with this technique is get friends to write little messages or draw your little pictures and you can embroider them in which leaves you with a lovely memory bag. Just to recap what we've done today, first of all we made a t-shirt using spray fabric paints and a stencil. Then we made a bag using a dry needle felting method. And lastly we used hand stitching to embroider a leaf on a bag. For any more information on the products we've used today, visit the website or pop into any of the stores and talk to a colleague.